One example of the problems we look at is the scale of social mobility and we do find social mobility is uh, related strongly to income inequality and other people have now shown that too. Um, that social mobility is lower in the most unequal countries like the United States. So, you know, Americans would get nearer to the American dream if they were more like uh, Denmark. But I think the issue is not that we should all become more like Denmark or more like Sweden. We should uh, stay in many ways as we are with our national differences, but we should all reduce our income differences. What we did was to look at the scale of income differences between the richest and poorest 20% in each of the rich developed countries and then look at that uh, in relation to the scale of various health and social problems. And we find that all the problems that are more common at the bottom of the social ladder, not only um, lower life expectancy but worse mental illness, uh, worse performance of children on maths and literacy scores, more obesity, lower social cohesion, weaker community life, more homicide, a whole range of these problems. Uh, anything from twice as common to ten times as common in the rich developed societies with bigger income differences. So if you compare the United States or, uh, or Britain with the Scandinavian countries, for instance, you find these enormous differences. The differences are so big because it's not just the people at the bottom who are affected. Uh, inequality affects us all and it seems to affect us uh, directly through the relative income rather than absolute level of income. Um, and I think that means that these, these um, problems are substantially responses to social status differentiation themselves. That means we have to understand it not as a, an effect of our physical circumstances on our health, but as a social effect. You know, my income is important in where it puts me in relation to others in society. It's to do with social class, social status, relative income. There are differences between uh, Sweden and Japan, how they are designed, with taxes and etc. But the outcome is the same. They have a low inequality. Yes, it's very interesting, the contrast between Sweden and Japan. There are some controversies about the scale of Japanese inequality, uh, but a recent study shows that it's still more like the Scandinavian countries than others. Uh, but uh, they get their greater equality in quite different ways. Sweden starts off with large differences in earnings and then redistributes. Uh, Japan does much less redistribution but starts off with smaller income differences. We think it doesn't matter how you get your greater equality as long as you get there somehow. But I do think that uh, in fact we must do it both ways. Um, not only through dealing with tax avoidance and tax havens, but also um, I, I, the main reason why our societies have become more unequal is the top incomes has, have run away from the rest of us. And I do think the bonus culture is, a lack, is an expression of a lack of any democratic constraint on the people at the top. And we must respond to that by building in democratic constraints. I mean, for instance, uh, the way in which about half the European Union countries have some legislation for employee representatives on company boards. That must be strengthened and all our countries need to adopt it. But we should also, I think, try and grow the sector of our economies made up of employee-owned companies, cooperatives, mutuals, which have much smaller income differences and many other benefits, as well as apparently doing quite well in productivity terms. <laughs>